The San Antonio Spurs will be picking number nine. The question is, Spurs fans, who are you going to pick? What is up, San Antonio Spurs fans? Welcome to TSR Sports. Well, the good news is the Spurs are picking ninth overall in the NBA draft next month. The bad news is they didn't move up at all. Of course, they could have moved down too, so let's be thankful that did not happen. Saw this interesting article on Air Alamo that I want to share with you with the three projected top players that should be available when the Spurs pick at number nine. Drop a comment down below. Are there any one of these three players, Keegan Murray, Jalen Durant, or Johnny Davis, that you'd be very interested in on our roster? Or do you want none of these three guys? Is there somebody else in that range that you'd rather draft? Don't put in the comments, I want Jabari Smith Jr. or Paolo Bancaro. They're not going to be available at number nine, Spurs fans. Hit that thumbs up. If you like to help support a fellow Spurs fan, and subscribe for more Spurs content. I'll be doing a lot of draft videos until we get to the draft on June 23rd, I believe it's. Anyways, let's go. Let's start off with power forward Keegan Murray, who may be the best fit of players in this range, but has often been projected to go fifth or sixth. However, there's a chance that he could drop as other players' draft stock rises. And we do see this all the time, Spurs fans. We saw this in the NFL draft last month, where players projected on the first round, like a Malik Willis, with so many teams needing a starting quarterback. I don't think he was drafted until the third round, so players do jump up. They mentioned in this article, Josh Giddey was expected to be in the back half of the lottery last year and was selected sixth overall. The NBA is one of those sports. You only have five starters, and it's crucial you get the player that fits the biggest hole in your starting lineup if you feel like one of these lottery players can be a starter. So we don't know what's going to happen. I The NFL draft, I was way off. Many analysis were, we're going to see these NBA mock drafts myself included all over the place, and players are going to go here, here, here. And then when the actual draft happens, we're going to be like, he was drafted when, who, why? Because the NBA teams are going to look at players differently. We saw it last year with Joshua Primo, not expected to be a lottery pick, and the Spurs took him with their pick. So we don't know who the Spurs are going to evaluate as a top 10 pick. The team's ahead of us. They may have a guy that's ranked 13 on the big boards, the NBA big boards, but they take him at the seventh spot because they feel it fits a need for the team. That being said, if Keegan Murray does fall to the number nine spot, there's a chance the Spurs could select him. He'd make a terrific addition. Murray would give the team a starting caliber four who can score in the paint, knock down threes, and defend multiple positions. And I do feel like if the Spurs draft him, he would start him right away. So I want to show you uh, two little clips here on this uh, highlight, the uh, Keegan Murray 2022 NCAA tournament highlights. Gets the rebound, takes it up the court, coast to coast, and finishes with the layup in the paint. So having a power forward, they can grab a board. My goodness, we need rebounding on this team's first fans. We know this. We get crushed second chance opportunities, third chance opportunities. But having a big guy, things like 6'8", who can get the board and then take it coast to coast and finish his own fast break with the defense in transition. It's not like he was going one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody was following him down there, so I like that. But also this, we might see a lot of this with Keegan Murray as we watch the end of this play. There he is out uh, in three-point land, drives by his defender, and boom, Chakalaka with the thunder dunk of justice. Um, anyway, I feel like there's a lot of potential for Keegan Murray. The joke would be we have the Murray brothers with DeJounte Murray and Keegan Murray, but he would be my ideal pick to land at number nine. I really, 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 really feel this team needs a legit starting power forward. No disrespect to Doug McDermott. But he is not legit four, in my opinion. And Kelvin Johnson should not be ever playing in the four spot or the five spot, for that matter, even though he's been thrust into that position. Let's talk about the other player that may be available at number nine, Jalen Duran, an explosive 6'11 center who gives San Antonio some much-needed front court athleticism. Jakob Prittle is a very good center, outplaying his contract unbelievably by leaps and bounds. But when I think Jakob Prittle, I don't think uh, super athletic, if you will. Anyway. Durant should be available at nine, and if selected, he'd add valuable rim protection, excellent rebounding, and a serious lob threat. Boom! We haven't seen a lot of that. The old alley oops. Uh, not not enough alley or oop with our San Antonio Spurs these days. The potential is definitely there, and he could make for a very good two-way starter in the NBA, maybe even on the Spurs. And two-way players are where we thrived. That's where we thrived in our team's history with David Robinson, Tim Duncan, number two, etc. Rounding out the top three players from the ninth pick is Wisconsin guard Johnny. Oh, before I get to Johnny Davis, uh, if they were to Jeff Dalen, Jalen Duran, Jakob Pert only has one year left on his contract. So would Jalen Duran essentially be the backup center for Jakob? And then would they let Jakob walk? Or could they try to trade him right now as they have him kind of on the cheap? I mentioned he's outplaying his contract. I think this last year is $9 million. He's going to get more when he resigns with the Spurs or whoever. So could they try to trade Jakob? Sorry, I wanted to bring that up real quick. Anyway. Wisconsin guard Johnny Davis. Davis is one of the best scorers in college basketball this past season, averaging 19.7 points per game, which ranked 25th in the nation. 
He accomplished that by being effective scoring in the mid-range, bullying his way to the rim with strong drives, and drawing an impressive number of free throws. And we don't have any guys that gets in the line right now on a consistent basis like seven, eight times a night. So could he be that guy? I don't know. On the other hand, he did struggle shooting from beyond the arc. That's something we definitely don't need. But that hasn't deterred San Antonio from taking players in the past. True. Davis' skill set could make a nice backcourt mate for DeJounte Murray. But with limited minutes to divide among Murray, Davis, or Sal Primon Jones, the Spurs would be forced to make difficult decisions later. And I agree, that would mean one concern with drafting another guard! Not another guard! No! Anyway, if John... Sorry. I haven't done a lot of Spurs content recently, so I've got to say a lot of energy I'm trying to get out here right now. And I'm pumped for the draft, as you should be as well, if you're a Spurs fan. If Johnny Davis was taken ninth overall by the San Antonio Spurs, I feel that all but means Lonnie Walker is gone. And also, what does that mean moving forward with Murray, Davis, Vassell, Primo, and Jones, etc.? Does that mean we move one of these shooting guards to small forward? Does that push Kellen Johnson out? That, that would be my biggest concern if Johnny Davis is drafted. A lot of you said he's a great player. I haven't admittedly watched his highlights yet. I'll be watching highlights as I do these draft videos uh, moving forward. But it raises a lot of question marks that the Spurs would have to deal with who's made it get cut or who is off the team completely. So that's what, that would be my least favorite move. That being said, here's what they have to say. Murray may be the best fit of the Spurs, I agree, but Bedran is more likely to be available and could provide San Antonio with the best athlete they've had at center, maybe best athlete overall, since my man, David Robinson. 50 year anniversary for the Spurs, David Ward number 50. You thought the stars were lining for that number one, number one overall pick, but it didn't happen. Anyway. Additionally, Davis could be an above-average perimeter scorer and a solid defender to the team. I think the way that players are listed right here is the order of my preference for the San Antonio Spurs. I feel like the glaring need, it's just blinding how bad we need a legit power forward. Doug McDermott, 6'7", gives us nothing on rebounding. He's a good three-point shooter. We bring in KBT, KBD sometimes to back him up. He's been a very solid role player. But we don't have a legit starting four. And I'm not sure Zach Collins could be that guy. He might be better at center. Taking Keegan Murray would fill a huge hole in this roster in the starting lineup. And he would probably start immediately. I cannot see any way, shape, or form. And it would drive me nuts. And I would do a rant video about it if the Spurs drafted Keegan Murray and sent him to the G League in Austin. That cannot happen. That being said, if Keegan Murray's gone and he is the player, I expect to not be available at the number nine spot the most. If I had to pick one player that I don't think is going to be available at number nine, it is also Keegan Murray. I think he's going to go somewhere between five and before us. I see him mocked around four, five, or six, and I think that's where he's going to drop in that four to six range. So that being said, Jalen Duran, I know some of you would like him on the Spurs. Some of you wouldn't. Some of you say, yeah, he's a very explosive athlete. He just dunks, whatever. Yeah, maybe he's just a dunker. You know what we don't have on a team? A consistent dunker. We have guys that occasionally take it to the hole like Devin Massell, Kelman Johnson, and throw one down. Uh, Joshua Primo shows him ability to finish at the rim. But do we have a guy that puts fear into our opponent that's just going to, boom, throw it down and bounce the ball off your freaking head and put you in the ER? We don't have that kind of guy. Shaq was just a dunker. Now, granted, Shaq was a freak athlete, but he was just a dunker in the end that couldn't hit a free throw. So if we were to get Jalen Duran, hey, you know what? That's been my biggest criticism of Jakob Pertl since I've started this channel three years ago. I don't know how many times you guys have heard me say it, and I've seen you say it in the live streams. Dunk the ball! Because you see him in there. He's open. There's the rim. There's the Jakob. And there's the alley. Let me throw it off the backboard. Having a guy in the paint that will take it down and finish it with righteous, viciousness, justice, and authority with the meanest mother... You know what? Thunder dunk of justice in the history of San Antonio Spurs basketball. If he can bring that, I'm all on board. And then Johnny Davis, if we select him, obviously I'll root for him. Be glad he's a San Antonio Spur. But we'll have a lot of concerns what that means for the rest of the roster moving forward. That's all I got, Spurs fans. There are the three players I talked about. Again, drop a comment down below. Somebody else that you might be interested in reasonably in the first round that you know, think would maybe fit the team better than one of the three, these three guys. Uh, again, I'll be doing a lot of Spurs videos moving forward. Had two weeks off, a lot of draft videos. I want to talk about, you know, the four picks we have. I want to talk about maybe training up, trading down I've seen talk about. There's a lot to talk about this draft coming up. I'm excited. And hopefully this guy we take ends up being a franchise player and is that one last 
piece to the cog that gets us back to being a perennial playoff team. I want to thank you all for tuning in. And as always, Ghost Bears go!